Lovelies, it's Gretchen. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we're doing a sit down video today where I thought I would play around with a new palette that I received. This is the palette Mystique from Alter Ego. I am so in love with this. This is a brand new palette too, from what I was able to gather. It just came out not too long ago. Love, first of all, this packaging, absolutely stunning. And then you have the shadows on the inside, gorgeous. And so I created a look today using this palette while chatting with y'all, giving y'all some life updates on my end, as well as I kind of talk about why I've taken a step back from YouTube a little bit, but how I'm wanting to come back and put my all into it again, as well as some other fun little life updates. So if you want to hang out with me, maybe do your own makeup, just chill and chat a little bit, then keep watching. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Get Ready With Me. I haven't done a Get Ready With Me in a while. I actually don't know the last time I did one. It feels like it was a long time ago, but maybe it wasn't that long of a time ago. But I have some new palettes that I wanna play with, so I'm playing with one in particular today. And then I just thought I'd chat with you all. I feel like I've got some life updates for those that don't watch vlogs that y'all might be interested in. I just thought we could, you know, chat about life and stuff like that. Uh, but first I do need to prime my face. I'm using the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. Pay no mind to the hormonal acne that I've been dealing with for a year now. And I'm finally gonna go see a dermatologist about because this is ridiculous that I'm still dealing with it a year after stopping birth control, which I'll get into that. So for anyone that may be new here, whenever I do makeup, I always start with my eyes because fallout, uh, it's way easier to just clean it up afterwards, like when I put foundation on and stuff like that. And so the eyeshadow palette I'm gonna be playing with today was gifted to me by Alter Ego. They reached out to me and they were like, we'd love to send you some of our makeup. And I was like, um, absolutely, I would be honored. So they sent me a few of their palettes and this I believe is their newest one, which thank you Alter Ego for sending this to me. It's called Mystique and the colors in this. So Twitch chat voted on this palette, which I'm very glad they did because it is stunning. So that is the packaging for it. And then the color scheme inside, like I already know what I'm gonna do. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm here for it. I am all about the vivids. So I'm gonna be using the pink, the purple, and the light blue today. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for an eye look today. But yeah, I always do my eye makeup first, just in case there is fallout so that I can clean it up a little bit easier when I go to do the rest of my face. Alter Ego also did send me their eyeshadow base. So I'm gonna use that today. Always down to try a new one since I'm gonna be using their palette figure I'll try this as well. It has the same consistency as like the Urban Decay one, specifically the anti-aging one. I know everyone kind of gravitates toward the original one. As someone in her 30s, pushing mid 30s, I like the anti-aging one. Does it actually do anything? I don't know. But for this look, I am going for a pink, purple, blue theme. If I forget to mention any products, they will be listed in the description below. So, how has everyone been? How is everyone's May? I can't believe we're already into June. Like, where did the time go? I feel like on one hand, I feel like this year is going by really fast. And on the other hand, I feel like it's dragging by. Like I specifically feel like January through the first half of April, felt like they took forever. But then the second half of April and May, just zoomed on by. I'm like, okay, we're already done. So so how has everyone's, I guess almost first half of the year, it'll be halfway through the year at the end of this month. So we're not quite halfway through the year, but how has everyone's year been going? Anyone doing anything interesting or fun? I've talked about this in some of my vlogs. So if you don't know, I recently, uh, for the past like three and a half months or so, was in a permanent makeup program for cosmetic tattooing. And I recently finished up that program. I'm still waiting to take my license exam as of this recording session. But basically once I take the license exam and pass it, I will be a licensed cosmetic tattooer, which is wild to think about. I'm very excited for it, but it also makes me kind of nervous in a way because I'm like, huh, tattooing someone and not just like any part of them, it's their face. That's wild. So yeah, that's that's been pretty much my life since, when did I start that? 
it was like middle of February, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it was like the day after Valentine's Day was the first day of classes. And then it just finished up, not this past weekend. So today is June 2nd, Sunday, June 2nd at the time of me recording this. So it wasn't like this weekend that I finished up. It was the last weekend in May. It was a three and a half month program and I really enjoyed it. I loved the school that I went to. It was like an hour drive for me in one direction every Friday and Saturday. So that was fun having to leave my house at like 7.30 in the morning to get there on time because I have anxiety, shocker, and I was always terrified of like something happening on the interstate and then me being late to class. So I would always leave way earlier than necessary. And I think there was only one day out of all of those days where I hit any kind of traffic slowdown. And even then, I think it delayed me by like eight minutes. So I still showed up at about 8.35 and my class started at nine. So we love anxiety. But yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I really loved the instructor. She was fantastic. Wealth of knowledge. I absolutely loved my classmates. Shout out to them. They're fantastic people. And I wish nothing but the best for them in the future in whatever endeavors they pursue. I ended up loving the class and everything so much that I have now signed up for a basic aesthetics program at the same school. So. Same instructor, which I'm very excited for. I believe one of the people that was in my cosmetic tattooing class will also be in that program. So that's cool that I'll know one person. And I'm very excited to start learning about aesthetics. So this class, some of the big things that will be touched on are things like facials, waxing. I believe there's a whole segment on makeup, including special effects makeup, which I'm really excited for. What else? What else was in there? Oh. Brow lamination, brow lifts, brow or lash tints, brow tints, all the tints. <laughs> so yeah, I am very much looking forward to that. It doesn't start until July. And whereas my cosmetic tattooing class was every Friday and Saturday, this will be every Monday and Tuesday. Same hours, same amount of time each week. Though I do believe this one has an online component, I think. If I remember correctly, very much looking forward to getting started with that. And then on top of all of that, I am starting my own business. Who told me to do that? Well, I mean me, but you know what I mean. Now that I have finished with my cosmetic tattooing program, I have decided that, hey, I'm actually going to try and do something with this license. And I am in the process of starting my own business. I have already basically agreed to a salon suite a one-year contract. I still have to like sign paperwork and do a deposit and stuff like that. I am in the process of going through that. However, I will say they don't exactly make setting up a business very user-friendly, at least the website that I've been trying to like go through. They don't exactly make it very user-friendly. So it's been kind of a pill to register my name and stuff like that, but we'll get there, we'll get there. But yeah, so a lot of things are happening right now. I personally am very excited for everything, but also nervous because I've never started a business like this before. You know, I have content creation, but that's something that I can just do from home on my own time. Whereas this one is going to be based in a salon suite. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a lot, but I'm excited and just a little nervous at the same time. But I think it's, I think it's going to be good. For now, I will be offering cosmetic tattooing services like brows, eyeliner, and lip blush. I may eventually offer, why do I make a face when I do my lower lash line? I may eventually offer like scalp micropigmentation and stuff like that or freckles. Um, but I think starting off, I'm going to stick with the kind of basics of cosmetic tattooing, which includes brows, eyeliner, and lip. I personally enjoy eyeliner, which was the one that's terrified me the most because permanently marking someone's eye that close, like it literally has to be in the lash line. So that was the one that I was most nervous to learn about, but it ended up being the one that I've enjoyed the most doing. And then surprisingly, like my, my least favorite, even though I enjoy it, 
would be brows, which is like the most common one. So interested in how that worked out. All right, I'm gonna do my eyeliner off camera and then I will be right back. Okay, I put eyeliner on and a little bit of mascara. We'll clean up the wing a little bit. And also when I don't feel confident about a winged liner look, I just throw in some false lashes and you can't even tell. But anyway, moving on to the face now because we'll save false lashes for the end. So yeah, that's currently what's happening in my world. I'm very excited for everything, but but nervous as, you know, might make sense. And with, with all these changes, um, there are some changes to content. So something else that has been on my mind and I know I've talked about it somewhat in vlogs, but I don't honestly remember if I've talked about it at length here in a get ready with me or a sit down video or anything like that. I thought I would kind of touch on why I've pulled back from content creation, specifically things like Instagram and YouTube. So if you haven't noticed, I am not very consistent on YouTube anymore. Um, I'm definitely not posting a whole lot on Instagram. Honestly, the reason for that is two different things. The first one is my confidence has plummeted over, I don't know, the last year or so. It honestly started around this time last year. Now I know I hadn't been consistent for a while, a little bit before that, and mostly that was because I was changing direction with my content focus and I was noticing that it wasn't being as well received as my Pearson videos, which is my fault for focusing primarily on Pearson related content. That's what people subscribe for and then I stopped doing it and people are like, well, I'm not gonna watch that, which is fine. It's totally fine if that's not your cup of tea. If you specifically came here for Pearson content, I understand completely. But it did kind of give my confidence a little bit of a hit on top of that. This time last year, I, well, actually it was April of last year, I decided to go off birth control just because I had been on it since I was about 15 years old. And at the time of me going off of it, I was 33. That's a long time to be on it if you ask me, but I'm not a doctor, so maybe it was fine. I don't know, but I just decided to give my body a break. There's also the possibility that my husband and I would like to try for children. That's a whole other thing right there. But something I didn't realize about going off birth control, and this is my fault for not researching or not knowing, I did not realize how much your body would change while it comes off of birth control. I did not realize that things you dealt with prior to going on birth control would come back, such as acne and also hair growing at a rapid rate. This may be TMI, but my armpit hair grows so freaking fast now. Thankfully it is still blonde, so it is not as noticeable, but my God, I did not have to shave this much while on birth control. So that's fun. So on top of acne coming back, we, we love good old hormonal acne. On top of it coming back, I also noticed my weight fluctuating and not in a way that was good for my mental health. All of these things kind of hitting me at one time really did a number on my confidence, my self-esteem, and just overall image of myself. And then on top of things, I still had like confidence in everything because of my red hair. But then I decided in fall of last year, hmm, I wanna change. So I got rid of the red hair. And one of the main reasons for getting rid of the red hair was one, I just couldn't be bothered with the upkeep anymore. Two, the cost. It's so expensive to get a fashion color professionally done. And yes, I could have gone back to dyeing it myself, but again, I couldn't be bothered with the upkeep. And then I was just like, well, I've had the red hair now for, what was it at that point? Pretty much a little over three years. Cause I did it during basically the height of pandemic when I was furloughed from my job at the time. And I was like, well, I'm bored. Let's do something with my hair. So I dyed it red and I was like, oh, well, this is fun. And then it just kind of stopped for roughly three-ish years. But then last fall, I got it in my head. I was like, let's do a change. And I decided to get rid of the red. I regret getting rid of the red. And a lot of y'all said that I would. A lot of y'all were like, 
oh, you're gonna miss it, you're gonna miss it. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure I will, but you know what, it's time for a change. I didn't realize I was going to miss it as much as I do. I thought that it would be fun to do a change, especially since I had had different colored hair like all throughout my life. And every time I would change to something else, it never really bothered me. But I think this was the first time that I went from, went away from a vivid and went back to a natural color. And I think there was a little bit of some shock, not a good shock. I have been dealing with my confidence being at an all time low and just not wanting to be perceived basically. So yeah, that's, that's why one reason why I've pulled back from especially YouTube, like doing sit down videos. Vlogs I'm a little bit better about just because I feel like I don't have to be 110% all the time in vlogs. Does that make sense? I feel like I can just show you all my everyday self and it's fine because it's a vlog. Also, apparently I'm running out of my liquid contour. Hello? I say I don't want to open a new one yet. I have a new one, but I don't want to have to open it yet since I know there's products still in here. So yeah, like that's one reason why I really do enjoy vlogs is because I feel like I don't have to be on all the time, if that makes sense. I feel like it's okay if I have my hair up and a lack of makeup on in a vlog because a vlog is like everyday life. Whereas with sit down videos and this, again, this is all me because this is the standard that I set for myself from the beginning. I feel like when it comes to sit down videos, I have to have my makeup done. I have to have the full lashes on. I did a sit down video in a different setting just here in my office back in what, February or something like that. And it was fine, but it just didn't feel right. For me i don't know that's just a standard that i've done to myself it's my own fault but i also just because of my confidence kind of dropping i can't be bothered to always do a full face of makeup which is weird because then i'll stream on twitch like three or four days a week and i usually do a full face of makeup i mean there are some days where i don't and it's fine but for some reason with youtube i have to have like for a sit down video i have to have the full face of makeup and again it's just something in my head that's like, you have to do this because you set this up for yourself. So on top of changes with my body after going off birth control that were very unexpected and I don't know how to deal with them, such as the hormonal acne, though like I said, I have requested an appointment with a dermatologist. So hopefully that will result in something positive, but I've also been dealing with weight gain. And as someone who had weight loss surgery, you don't necessarily want to say that you've gained weight because then you feel like a failure, which is what I felt like. It's been a rough time in Gretchen's noggin. It's it's not been, the sound the sounds awful and I, and I don't like want to bring the mood down or anything like that, but that's just where I've been and why I've pulled back some from creating, especially sit down content here on YouTube. There's also the fact that I am still trying to change the focus of my channel. I don't want to like primarily be known for Pearson related content. And it's fine if that's how you found me. That's how the majority of people found me. Though it is always interesting when someone says, oh yeah, I found you from like Halloween hauls. Or I found you from a, a random vlog. And I'm like, so other stuff is getting out there. <laughs> Yay. And it's perfectly fine if you found me for Pearson related content. But I still have Pearsons. I have a Pearson video coming up. like. Don't get me wrong, I still love them. It's just not like my focus anymore. And then on top of all of this, you deal with working with companies, like being a content creator, one of the common things you deal with are sponsorship opportunities, which is great, you know, an, an extra source of income, even if it's a one-off or something like that, that's fantastic. You then get the issue where either a brand does not want to pay you for your time. They either don't want to pay you or they don't want to pay you your worth. So like they're still willing to, to pay you, but it's not at all worth your time and effort, which also sounds kind of conceited, I realize, but value your time. This goes for anyone, whether you're a content creator or not, value your time. And so I ended up having quite a few companies reach out to me which was great, reach out to me and say, hey, we wanna work with you. We're gonna send you this product and we want you to do this in return. And I'm like, okay, here are my rates. And they're like, ooh, we're not gonna do that because your views are not there. I try not to focus on that, 
but when a company basically tells you that you're not worth that to them, it stings a bit, if I'm being honest. So then when I had several companies do that to me, shout out to Ofer for not doing that to me. They're the real ones that are like, yes, we understand your time, we value it, we get it. Shout out to them for actually valuing content creators. Y'all are great. So then on top of, you know, everything, hearing from others that because of where you are, it's not worth it. It's just kind of like, huh, so it is me. <laughs> so another reason why I pulled back and that was an unfortunate pullback because that just kind of makes it worse. You know, they're already telling you this one thing and then you get down about it. So then it makes it worse. Fun times, right? So that kind of put a little bit of a little bit of a zing into my confidence uh, regarding content creation. So if, if anyone has been wondering, hey, Gretchen hasn't been putting out content the way she used to. You know, what happened? This is the honest truth. My confidence went down the drain. Non-existent. Garbage disposal was turned on, chopped it up into little bitty pieces, and now I'm just like, well crud. Now what do I do? I wonder if I'll ever get to a point where I can tattoo my own brows, like for touch-up color. Not there yet. I don't, I don't think I could handle that yet, but maybe one day down the road, I'll be able to do it myself. All of that to say, I have a plan of action for myself, basically, when it comes to content creation, specifically here on YouTube and Instagram. However, Instagram, I kind of have beef with them at the moment, just because I feel like my stuff just doesn't get seen anymore, which stinks. But again, I kind of get it because I've changed what I post on there. I do think once I got rid of the red hair, it like stopped pushing me. I don't know if that would make any kind of sense, but I feel like I got way more hits on Instagram, even for photos. That could also be the problem. I am still not very big into short form content. I like to consume short form content. I don't necessarily like to make it myself. I like to watch it, but eh, I don't know. That's why I still really love YouTube because I like sitting down, recording these long videos and editing them because then I feel like my time was spent well, but to basically film this entire makeup look and then to edit it down to like a one minute video, I'm like, damn, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of work for one minute of content, you know? Which is why a lot of the makeup, TikToks, reels, shorts, whatever, that's why a lot of the ones that I've made Focus mostly on the eyes. I don't even show what happens with the face. I'm doing it now because we're chatting. So my plan of action to get back to being consistent with YouTube is to do my best to upload at least one day a week, but like schedule it for myself. So instead of saying like, oh yeah, I'm gonna upload at least one video a week, I'm gonna get back to doing scheduled content. So it's like every Tuesday I upload a video. Every Thursday I upload a video, something like that. So I think right now I'm gonna do my best for every Tuesday, every, every like every single Tuesday, there will be a video. Cause I used to do Tuesdays and Fridays, I think, and those were pretty good days. Though sometimes Fridays would be a little rough because you know, people don't tend to watch a whole lot of YouTube on the weekends I've noticed. So I'm, I want to start with getting back to every Tuesday, I'm gonna upload a video consistently. And then maybe we can get to a point where I throw a second day back in there. And if I have a video that like an extra video or something like that, I, I won't wait till the next Tuesday. It may be one of those things where it's like, surprise this week, there are two videos. That's my thought process right now to just kind of get back to being consistent. So, cause I have found saying, oh yeah, I'll upload one video a week, but not having a specific day. I have found that's not really helpful for me. I do also hope that I can meet with a dermatologist so I can discuss things to help with my hormonal acne because again, it really has kind of uh, diminished my my zest for doing things because I haven't dealt with acne this bad or consistent in a while. Like even, even on the pill, I would still get acne, but it would be around the time of getting period. I know this is probably TMI for a lot of people, but this is just life. I would end up getting like some breakouts, but then the majority of the time outside of my period, I would be fine. And I'd have maybe like a pimple, but it wouldn't be 
cystic or anything. And that's what's happening right now with hormonal acne is it's cystic. So <laughs> it's not a fun time. And so I'm hoping meeting with a dermatologist can get me back to a point where I can get my skin under control because then, you know, you think about it, I want to be an esthetician. So I'm doing these basic aesthetics classes. I want to do aesthetic work, but who wants to come to an esthetician whose skin is breaking out, you know? Every esthetician I've ever been to doesn't have skin problems. So it's like, who would want to come to an esthetician who is dealing with acne problems of her own that she can't clear up, you know? I hope I can get things under control. I hope I can get back to a happy place. My hair is growing out. I swear on my life, if I ever say that I want to cut my hair again, y'all better stop me. I mean it. I'm holding that to y'all. Please stop me. Don't let me cut my hair. Every single time I cut my hair short, I love it for about a week and then I'm like, oh no, what have I done? So if you ever hear me in any video or on social media of any kind, say I wanna cut my hair, please comment aggressively, don't do it. <laughs> hair dyeing is a little bit different because that's, that's a whole journey. But if I say I wanna cut my hair, so help me, I'm watching y'all, y'all better stop me. <laughs> I mean it. No, but seriously, hopefully I can get to a place that I'm happy with my hair. It's starting to try and blonde itself. The only problem is it's warm toned and I don't like warm toned for me. It just, it's not, it's not me. I am a cool toned person, except for my red apparently was warm toned. For some reason I didn't feel that way with my red, but I'm still learning what's warm toned and cool toned. Cause there were times during my cosmetic tattooing program where I'm sitting there going like, that's cool toned. And they'd be like, nope, that's warm toned. I'm like, just kidding. <laughs> also somehow I got eyeliner here in my inner corner. I don't know how I did that. Also I'm waiting for lashes to dry. I think for lipstick, I'm just gonna stick with a kind of simple color so that the focus is on the eye look. So I'm just gonna do, yeah, pretty, pretty light nude. So I think that works. So also going forward with my content, something that I do want to focus on, and if you haven't noticed yet, I have been doing a lot of bookish related content. I am back to reading. I, for those that don't know, I have a whole master's degree in library science. So I used to be a big time reader, and then I got away from it for like the past five years. And finally, I am back into it again. Thank goodness, because I've been enjoying it. Like during May, I read nine books. So I want to create more bookish related content. I've been doing some, but I'd like to do more. So hopefully that is something y'all are interested in. Again, vlogs, I absolutely love doing them. That's also a confidence thing with the vlogs in the sense that my life is not that exciting. So then I feel like I'm vlogging the same thing over and over again, because that's just my life. I try and vlog things that I think are gonna be interesting, but I've been doing a lot of reading related vlogs recently. So I like focus on a book and then give my thoughts regarding it. And again, like I said, you know, completing my permanent makeup program, I could do some content regarding permanent makeup now that I know it from the actual tattooer side of things. So if you have any questions or comments regarding permanent makeup, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So it's not like I am getting away from body mods. I'm just taking a different route with them these days. I'm like, I still have, I have a tattoo appointment coming up, like a body tattoo appointment. So like that's not going anywhere. It's just my, my focus has shifted from piercing related. Also, I kind of want to put some gems on real fast. So let me figure out what I'm going to do with that. I have an idea. So take this out of my hair for a moment, fix my hair real fast. Oh, I guess I should set my face, huh? There we go. Okay. I have an idea. I've been putting like gems, like to fi finish up some eye looks recently. So I think I'm going to try and try and do something with that. So let me see. I've got like all these fun little multicolored rhinestone gem things. And I don't, none of these are pink, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm thinking of doing the more, mm, I kind of like the more lavender look. So I, this one is kind of hard to tell, but they're like little stars. And I think if I do the lavender star in the middle and then two lavender, like regular gems on the side, I think that will look pretty fun. Also why I try and get this to work. I've also been considering a social media detox. I don't know exactly what that would entail, but I've been thinking like, even if I just stay off of social media for like a week or something, I just think that might be beneficial 
for my mental health. I don't know though. Has anyone done a social media detox? Whether you're a content creator or not, I feel like social media in general can affect all of us negatively, not just content creators. So has anyone done a social media detox? Sometimes I wish I could be those people that are like, yeah, I don't have this social media. And I'm like, what's that like? <laughs> what's that like to just be like, I never had it. Because I'm the type of person who has had pretty much all of the social medias. And like social media can be great because it can keep you up to date with things, but it can also be bad in the sense that it makes your esteem plummet because everyone is posting their highlight reels. No one's posting the bad things in life. So we're all sitting here going like, wow, they've got it all together. When really no one's got it together. So I love how I make a face. Every time I try and do stuff like this, I always end up making a face. <laughs> I guess it's my way of like pulling my skin taut with a out actually pulling it taut. So I will say every time I do these little gems, like it's fun, but it makes a huge mess. Cause then I just end up with like eyelash glue all over my hands because that's what I use to stick it on my face with is eyelash glue. I feel like it's better for your skin. It's already safe. Okay, we're not gonna go that route apparently. I want one more on the inner part. I do appreciate y'all sitting here. Listen to me ramble. I do like how the makeup look turned out even without the gems. It's my thought process. Hopefully those actually show up. I'm sitting here going like, see how that looks? No, like we can't see anything. One more gem and then we're done. And then y'all can go on your merry way. All right, so there we go. There's the final look using the Mystique palette from Alter Ego. What do y'all think? I like how it turned out. I think it turned out really nice. So I'm very grateful that Alter Ego reached out to me and sent me these products. It's things like this. As a content creator, it's like, oh, I am, you know, being noticed for what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to create, and that's a good feeling. So thank you, Alter Ego, for sending me this. So that is the final look using the Mystique palette from Alter Ego. Again, Alter Ego, thank you for sending this palette to me. I really do appreciate it, and I can't wait to play with more of your products. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments regarding anything that I touched on in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Again, I am very much like focused on coming back to YouTube consistently. It may not be in the same capacity that I used to do YouTube stuff, but I, I wanna come back. This is where I am happiest. I do enjoy video editing and things like that. I've found a love with vlogs, just kind of chatting with y'all, very informal, I guess is the way to put it. It's, it's a little less formal than like when I do a sit down video in this setup. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, I do really enjoy the informalness of vlogs. I feel like I'm just chatting with friends, you know, just hanging out. Also, if you are interested, I do have YouTube memberships. There are three tiers right now and each tier gets you a little bit extra content. There is the artist tier where you can get an exclusive video every month. Another tier gives you early access to content whenever I post, and then you can just get some behind the scenes content as well. But that is it for this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to go down there, hit that subscribe button, as well as that notification bell, so YouTube will let you know when I upload next. But until next time, bye lovelies. Mm -hmm.